Gone Girl, the latest from director David Fincher, is out really soon, and that was a good enough excuse for us to celebrate a Fincher classic here on Things You Didn't Know. It's thin reasoning, I know, but hey, that's never stopped us before. So, here are seven things you didn't know about Fight Club. Problem. Gentlemen, welcome to Fight Club. Since we're talking about Fight Club, let's start off with a thing about a fight. In this scene where the narrator fights Bob, aka Meatloaf, they were both supposed to be shirtless. After all, that is one of the rules of Fight Club. They even built a special version of Meatloaf's fat suit for the scene that looked like a real torso with, you know, skin and nips and stuff. But the fat suit was super heavy and hot and it caused a lot of problems. For example, in this scene, later in the movie, Meatloaf's pants fall down because of his fake love handle. You can even see his leg padding for the fat suit, but Fincher kept the take in the movie because it was the best one. Anyway, going back to the fight scene, Meatloaf had to be rushed in oxygen mask after every take just to recover from the exertion. He would be drenched in sweat. Fun fact, they included a shot of Meatloaf with his oxygen in the movie itself, right here. The other issue with showing a shirtless Bob fighting was, David Fincher felt that it would just be too much. You know, with Meatloaf's giant sloppy tits flapping around and all. Let's move on. The scene where the narrator's boss confronts him is a favorite, but you may not have noticed that it has a continuity error. They actually did a reshoot of Edward Norton's profile shot because they came up with a different take on how he should have played it. Well, in the time between principal photography and the reshoot, the office building they shot in had changed the thermostat. So it changes from black to silver and back again during the scene. And it's just occurring to me now that you probably won't be able to even watch this scene ever again without looking at the thermostat literally the whole time. Well, since I've already kind of ruined the first half of the boss confrontation scene, why not break the fourth wall on the second half where the narrator kicks his own ass? In this part here where he's on the floor bleeding out of his nose, there's actually a guy crawling on the floor behind Edward Norton, squirting the fake blood through a tube. And clearly this guy is a pro at squirting fake blood through a tube. I mean a pro. Look at that. Look at how good that looks. Tyler Durden's outfits are pretty memorable, but a lot of people, including the MPAA, didn't seem to pay much attention to this tank top that he wears at the end of the film. In case you're not seeing it either, that shirt right there is a collage of pornography. The Motion Picture Association of America, you know, the guys who give movies ratings, were actually really tough on Fight Club. There were a lot of things left on the cutting room floor just to get it down to an R rating, but the porn shirt apparently wasn't one of them. I guess the MPAA just didn't notice let alone the executives of Fox. But I noticed. The pervy narrator always notices. Okay, so during the sequence where the narrator is trying to track down Tyler, there's this scene where he looks at the phone bill for clues. What you probably don't know is the numbers on the bill weren't fake ones, like they usually are in movies. Apparently Tyler had been dialing Hollywood mega agency CAA all night. David Fincher put that in there because he figured that CAA wouldn't sue. And even if they did, they'd have to sue themselves for 10%. Here's a couple of Easter eggs for you. See the movie marquee right there? That theater is showing Seven Years in Tibet, which of course stars Brad Pitt. And later on in the same scene, the other marquee in the distance is for the People vs. Larry Flint and Edward Norton movie. Norton and Pitt aren't the only ones with nods to their earlier work. David Fincher has one too. It was just a complete coincidence. The station wagon in this scene here happens to also be in the movie The Game, which Fincher had directed two years before Fight Club. He just asked production to get him an old beat up car. Well, when the wagon arrived, it looked eerily familiar to him. He then realized it was the same one they used in this scene with Michael Douglas and James Reborn. I know, fun fact, right? Let's finish on Marla. Uh, I, I mean, I don't, I don't mean finish on Marla. I mean, you know, well, you know what, never mind. Actually, maybe I did mean that. I am, I am a pervy narrator. Anyway, Marla has some of the best lines in the movie, including this one. My God. I haven't been f like that since grade school. Fans of the book will know that the original line was even more controversial, so controversial that Fox execs insisted that Fincher change it, which he did. But they weren't able to film any alternates until reshoots after principal. And the reshoots for this scene were shot in, of all places, a church rectory. Knowing that little bit of info makes Marla's line even more awesomely wrong, doesn't it? Even the camera operator started cracking up over Helena Bonham Carter's delivery. The shot cuts out one frame before the camera starts shaking from him laughing. Well, those are our seven things for today, but the first rule of things you didn't know is tell everyone about things you didn't know. And the second rule is the same as the first rule. So if you guys tell enough people, maybe we'll do a part two on Fight Club. Thanks for watching. 
Be sure to check out Cinefix.com and subscribe for more truish things about movies spoken to you by a pervy narrator right here on Things You Didn't Know.